Hello, it's Get Good Fox here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Camp Kellenqua, another home base location in Mayer Valley, aka the Valley. And let me tell you what, I was a little surprised. I was expecting to go into the six man base locations, but it turns out Camp Kellenqua is actually a five man location, making it a competitor to the rural police station and the Mazara farm. So I guess we're going to find out which is the best of three five man base locations in Mayer Valley. In the previous episode, I reviewed the rural police station and compared it to the Mazara farm to find out which is the better five-man base location, which I wound up giving to the Mazara farm. So that leaves the question, is Camp Kellenqua going to dethrone the Mazara farm, or will Mazara remain the king of the hill? Let's find out, starting with the location. Camp Kalanqua can be found on the western side of Mayer Valley with a sort of off-centered location. The base gets its name from the nearby lake known as Lake Kalanqua, which is shallow enough to be driven through. Wait, what the fuck? Oh my god, let me just hit the stuck command. What? What? Where did it take me? The positional strength of Camp Kellenqua is pretty average. It's neither playing to its strength or too heavily against it. You'd like your base to be in the middle of the map because launching a mission or returning with supplies is a shorter drive when the base is in the middle as opposed to far off in the corner. Fortunately, Camp Kellenqua isn't in one of the corners, so it's not bad. Anyways, let's get on foot and check out the base. The first thing you'll see is, oh, Camp Kellenqua was a recreational campsite before the zombie outbreak. Now it will be repurposed into our rural zombie fort. Let me tell you something. This is easily the biggest and most spacious base I have ever occupied. It has a huge perimeter formed by a bunch of log barricades, and the indoors is not a centralized single building, but rather a scattered compound of several smaller buildings. I have to say that I do like the wooden barriers because they give you this kind of old-timey fort feel, especially with the ramps that overlook the entrances. On the other hand, the barriers aren't the most effective due to the large quantity of areas that can be climbed over, and there's even a section that's been destroyed from a car that apparently rammed into it. At any rate, in order to move into this base, you're going to need five people at the minimum in your community. You're going to have to pay a thousand influence, but the base does come with a special perk of plus four beds for free, which I'll talk about later. But before we can talk about facilities, of course my neighbors come with the housewarming gifts and the zombie siege approaches. So what's it like defending Camp Kellenqua? Well, I found that the base is so big and there's so many holes in the barricades that it's kind of annoying to scramble around left and right trying to plug up all the holes they come through. So instead what I did was get on a watchtower that I built right in the middle of Camp Kellenqua and I just shot the zombies as they came. So the tower here actually has a pretty good vantage point. Otherwise, expect to scramble around all over the base trying to figure out where the zombies are slowly sneaking in. But now it's time to review the facilities, because this is what's going to really tell us whether or not Camp Kellenqua is better or worse than the rural police station and the Mazara farm. And this is what you're going to be looking at immediately after purchasing and moving into Camp Kellenqua. And from the looks of it, there will be a little bit of a cleanup in this base, but let's take a look at the facilities we're dealing with. We have five built-in facilities that are permanent and can never be torn down, and it looks like there will be four small facilities. Two of them are temporarily occupied. We can tear them down and free them up. And then we do have two large facilities available. Let's check out the permanent built-ins, though. Hopefully they aren't crap. The first one is the old well. Oh, and what do you know? This one is crap. At least it's crap for me. What it does is provide you water to your base, but because I've beaten the game with the Builder Leader, I've unlocked the Builder Legacy, which gives me permanent water and power, so this thing is crap. What you can do, though, is turn on the water to level up certain skills like plumbing. Up above the well is the cafeteria kitchen, which is a unique type of built-in level 2 kitchen. Being built-in means that the typical one-a-day material upkeep cost is waived, and what makes this unique is it has the ability to grill stuff up on top of everything a typical level 2 kitchen would have. What Grill Stuff Up does is let you spend one food for a 10 morale per community member bonus, which is actually pretty good. 
Up above that we have the command center. There's one of these in every base, so nothing special there. To the left we have a seating area. This place does nothing but occupy one of our slots, so we definitely want to tear it down. And when you do tear it down, you will get five bonus building materials. And further to the left we've got a storage room. This one does come at level one, so you will need to make the upgrades to it. Other than that, nothing remarkable, because every base has a storage room. Farther to the left, we've got heavy trash, just like the seating area. This is just occupying a slot, doesn't serve us any purpose, but tearing it down doesn't give us anything, so it's not as good as the seating area. And finally, all the way to the left, we've got a bunkhouse, which gives us plus four beds. This is not the same plus four beds as I mentioned in the beginning, the bonus plus four beds. That's actually on top of this bunkhouse, so I'm still going to talk about it later, though. This bunkhouse could be considered a third large facility because there is a large facility that provides plus four beds. It also has a mod slot and certain mods only fit in bedrooms like the white noise machine which I'm going to slap in here because it provides a big bonus to all community members morale. And this is what the base is going to look like once you strip out all the unnecessary stuff. I do want to point out that only one of the small facilities is outdoor, so if you want to put a watchtower or a garden in, that is the only available slot. But let's take a look at my facility choices for Camp Kelenqua, and of course I have the obligatory brother and sister facilities of the infirmary and the workshop. Without the infirmary, I cannot bounce back from injuries very easily, and without the workshop, I cannot repair or salvage my weapons, but this one is special because this workshop gives me plus two beds. It's not that the workshop specifically does. Any facility built in that location gets plus two beds, which is half of those bonus beds I mentioned. And farther to the left, I've got a hydroponics facility currently growing medicine, and it's also giving me plus two bonus beds. Just like that workshop, it's not the facility, it's not the hydroponics that's giving me the beds, it's the slot itself. Anything you build there is going to have that bonus plus two beds, and so those two slots combined give you the bonus four beds for free. Up above that, I built a watchtower. That is the only place it would fit because it was the only small outdoor facility. And I built it because your community tends to be unhappy if you don't build at least one watchtower. And it did provide me that nice shooting position during a siege. But the zombie threat reduction is completely wasted on this base because it's just way too noisy for it to make a difference. And finally, the super spicy large facility options. First off, we have a farm. This one's been upgraded all the way to level 3. Super fancy, and it's providing me plus 12 food with all the upgrades I've got in it. And finally, after two base reviews of not having it, the return of the lounge, allowing me to supercharge my morale with the original Xbox mod. And as you can see, we officially have maximum morale. Now I have to admit that I'm slightly disappointed that maximum morale did not have its own tier. Indeed, I'm still in the enthusiastic tier, which means I get 200% faster global action speed, 200% faster global build speed, and 100% bonus experience. But I don't care. I need maximum morale. Oh, but now Judgment Day has come as it's time for me to pronounce which is the best five-man base in the Mare Valley region. Previously, and you should watch those two episodes, the Rural Police Station and the Mazara Farm, I did say that the Mazara Farm was better than the police station, but can Camp Kalenqua dethrone the Mazara Farm? Each of these bases are very similar. You see, they all have two large facilities available. They all have a bedroom with plus four beds. They all have five built-ins. They all have redundant built-ins that aren't too useful. However, there is an important difference here. In those previous reviews for the police station and the Mazara farm, I complained that there weren't enough small facilities available to fully take advantage of those large facilities because it damaged the long-term sustainability of the base. But Camp Kellenqua gives you one extra small facility just for free. I don't know why it has it and the other ones don't, but it does. And that makes a huge difference. It's why I was able to fit the lounge into Camp Kelenqua, but not the Mazara farm in the police station. 
But the issue here is that Camp Kalanqua offers the same promises as the Mazara Farm and the police station, but it gives you even more. It gives you that one extra small facility slot. It gives you that level two kitchen with the grill stuff up feature the other bases don't have. It gives you an extra plus four beds on top of the bedroom, all for free and simultaneously not having the worst geographic location. That just makes it hands down. It's Plays it. I pronounce Camp Kalanqua to clearly be the best five-man base location in Mare Valley. But hey, that's the end of my video guide. Like this video if it helped you decide to move into Camp Kalanqua or hell, maybe it helped you decide to not move in. I don't know. Maybe you think I'm a big, dumb, stupid head. If that's the case, tell me why down in the comments section. Subscribe for future State of Decay content. Of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.